Saludos, mi gente. I am Erica Hernandez, and this is the Polymath Latina Podcast. Join me every week in real conversations with women from all walks of life who are making a true impact in their communities. We will dive into different topics that range from culture to religion, health, politics, and business. Whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with my guest or a table discussion up for debate, one thing is for sure. No topic is off the table. So how Latino are you if you don't speak Spanish? Can you ever lose the language you never learned? Today, I am joined by not one, but three amazing Latinas who roots come from Spanish-speaking countries. Andrea, Melissa, and Samantha are here to share their story as why they never learned Spanish, how others have made them feel for not speaking Spanish, and if at any point they have felt less than when around Spanish-speaking Latinos because they do not speak the language. Ladies, welcome to the Polymath Latina podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So let's get to it because there's a lot to talk about. And I know that you all feel differently about the subject and the language and whatnot. So starting off at the far end of the table with Andrea, um, can you share with us a little bit why you never learned the language? Um, it's not for lack of trying. You know, I got A's in high school two years, uh, college two years. I've, I've downloaded every app. I've tried in any way I could, but I felt so discouraged because of my pronunciation and because of the reaction from Spanish speaking people about my pronunciation. And it got to the point that I was just like, screw it. If I'm not going to be encouraged to try, then I don't need to focus my time or energy on it. I'm Latina enough in everything that I do and how I present myself and how I inspire other Latinas with my actions. Love it. Period. Samantha? <laughs> I kind of could relate to, um, not that I didn't try, just also the judgment, the laughter, teasing, you know, you pronounce something wrong. So you get discouraged and you almost like shelter yourself. Like I'd rather just not and avoid the embarrassment. So that's definitely where I, I was with speaking Spanish. Hmm. Yeah. And Melissa. So I have been trying to learn all this time. And I think partly because I didn't, I wasn't taught it because my dad had a lot of racist comments and growing up when he came here from Mexico. And so I feel like me learning it now is kind of an, a homage to say, um, screw you who were so horrible to him and I want to be able to be part of that culture and say I'm Latina and I can speak the language and I can so, but it's a struggle because I have the same, I, my pronunciation's hor horrible, my grammar's horrible, half the time I'm saying I'm going in future but it was meant the past and so, and so it's difficult but it's just, you know, to me it's an honor of my father. Well, that, you know, it's funny that you guys say that because one thing that a lot of people don't know about me is that Spanish is my first language. Um, I was raised with my grandmother who spoke factory English, right? Because she came from Cuba and she went straight into the Tootsie Roll factory and then she continued, I guess, her, you know, American immigrant career in the factory and industry. So she spoke her factory English um, and then I used to be babysit sat on as well for, by a Cuban lady as well. And she was elder she was the same age as my grandmother and even though sh her English was a lot better than my grandmother's um she wouldn't allow me to speak English so English uh, uh, Spanish is my first language and you know I think what happens with a lot of us uh Latinos who Spanish is predominantly the first language once you go into the education system right? Uh, you kind of lose that. Mm -hmm. And my mom has been in the United States since the age of five. So it's like I tell her, like, you're American girl. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you could be a white girl, right? Um, so for her, English was also something that she was brought up in because she went to the American school, right? Um, and I get, and it's funny because now at 41 years old, it's like, I don't speak Spanish. I speak Spanglish. Right. Be, and I've lost it. And sometimes I'm trying to cer find certain words and certain things. And I'm like, 
uh, 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 and then I throw out the Spanglish. And, and my parents, even my father, my father's like, what did you just say? Like, did you just <laughs> make up your own word? Um, so I get the fact of, you know, you guys kind of said, you know what, it is what it is. If I'm not going to be supported, if I'm not going to have people to actually help me learn this language, then fuck it, right? In, in, uh, in, in all necessary. Oh, wait, we could, we could swear in this podcast? Yeah, yes, I know. I, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Gracias. Gracias. No, oh, there you go. Hey. Hey. We're well, going to be throwing a couple of those zingers in throughout the. Throughout you know, the um, funny. Growing up, I could swear in Spanish, but I could not swear in English. Oh, oh yes, I could <laughs> swear perfectly in of Spanish. Of course, right. every language yeah. you always learn the bad words first, <laughs> right? So my thing is, is, is I want to go a little further back than people not being supportive and people like mocking you, right, for wanting to try or wanting yeah. to learn and not doing it. Was Spanish a language that was spoken at home and was the language taught at home? Yes and no. Um, my mother is, was born and raised in Jamaica okay. um, and my father was born here. Uh, my grandparents came uh, to Cuba but right before they had him. And then five siblings, uh, you know, he's one of five siblings. Uh, Spanish was spoken regularly in, in our home. We lived in our grandparents' house. Practically, it was down the street. We moved into that house when they moved away. So it was, it was in our lives, but it was to listen, not to speak. Um, they actually moved into a very, very, very predominantly white town of Little Falls, New Jersey, which is my hometown to this day. Mm -hmm. But they were really the only Cubans, let alone probably the only Hispanics um, back at that time period. So if you could speak English, it was better to do that, especially right. as a Cuban when you look less olive in complexion, you can pass, right? Like that's the term that everybody right. says, if you can pass, pass. Why make your life more complicated? And mm. for Cubans back in that time period, pre-boat lift when they came, the you know in that 70s period of time when they were first assimilating, it was not a positive time to be a Cuban. There was none of this Hispanic pride and heritage. Right. It was tone it down. You know, make sure the food tastes good, the music sounds amazing in the house, but don't walk around you know being proud of it. Um, you're in a minority. You know, then minorities are, you know, are marginalized. So it was not the same experience that we're lucky enough to have today. I, and that's, I think, why they didn't really encourage. I agree, because I grew up in the Midwest. So, I mean, you were either white or black. And so I was neither. And I would get called racial names for a black person because they didn't know what to call me. <laughs> and I think, you know, I feel that's so horrible. Not, I didn't mean to laugh. But no, no, it's, but it's, just, it's like <laughs> the, the ignorance. You're like, right. that ignorant. But um. I feel like my, my father was so afraid that we would get an accent. And you know, the ironic thing is my sister in high school, and she's like four years younger than I am, went to Mexico for a summer, like her senior year, and she's fluent, which is amazing, and I'm so envious of that, because I can get by, but to have that fear for your child that you can't pass on your culture and your language, so we didn't speak it, but we would go to Mexico once a year. I have family still there, and I have my relationship with them has become much stronger as an adult because I'm able to speak Spanish. But it's, it's, it's just really sad. And, you know, it is so lucky that we have this pride because you're right. There wasn't any. You were like, shh, yeah. you know. So, yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. So my mom was always in the corporate world. So I feel like she really had she was in that American corporate world. And it just made more sense to, like, fit in with the scene. And then coming home, it was kind of the same thing. You're on English mode. You're not really instilling that. And my grandparents um, spoke Spanish to us, same thing. Like, we understood it, but we just didn't speak. And they would kind of take advantage almost because the same thing. They were in factories. They took advantage to speak English to us and practice their English. So mm -hmm. somewhere along, it just got lost. And I think it's just, like you said, easier to fit in um, than stand out. That's a great point. Like they used us to practice their English, mm -hmm. and we pit, we used to always pick up my grandmother because she says <laughs> pero 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 between every <laughs> between every word she says it. And you know we think it's so cute when she says what she says, but you know in in essence that's what was done to me. If I'm at a restaurant trying to order food, and I say materva. They're like, what? And I'm like, oh, you like Matelba? I don't know how to say it properly. So yes, mature. I think you are the only other person I that order it I on know Amazon that my likes house, no matter Matelba. The I'm oh my god! It. Every time I buy am that, I and people are like, Ew, am I Latina enough now? 
Does that make me? Does that give me the? <laughs> well, I don't know. Right. I don't know what well, it that's is. A, well, that's a, yeah, that's a more of a Cuban is. thing. But <laughs> but I'm glad to finally meet somebody else other than like my family members who well not even my family members because I don't even think anybody else other than my father that, that drinks it that actually likes that. The rest of them are all iron beer and yes! and I yes! didn't like either of them. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so with that being said, now that you said like when you go to restaurants and you're like Materba, and, and, <laughs> it's and, not that bad. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm accentuating it silly. Or whatever. It silly, or whatever. Um, what are the general reactions that you get when you tell people that you're Latina or mm-hmm. they assume that mm-hmm. you are because mm-hmm. it's written, right? Mm-hmm. It's the way you, it's just that there's something about us, the way that we mm-hmm. carry ourselves, our mannerisms that are it's like, it's like written in our <laughs> forehead, right? Mm-hmm. So what are some of the things that um, when people assume that you do speak Spanish and you tell them, yo no te entiendo, like I don't understand. No. What, is, no. what is that reaction? Well, that you get? Um, <laughs> it's a facial reaction. I, I say, well, did you, write, did you write a book about being today's inspired Latina? Are you influencing <laughs> other Latinas? Because I spoke at the New York Times about it. What did you do? I mean, I don't know the language, but I've done a lot of other really cool things. Can we focus on those? You know, like, right. does it have to be just cut or dry? Are you more Hispanic than me because you could speak it, but you haven't done anything to help other Latinas? Community. Or other people I in love your community? that. Que? Que? Just saying. Que? Que? Yeah, you, know, you like, definitely get me. like a judgmental, yeah. the side eye. Sometimes I'm just like, can you order for me? Because <laughs> it's really, they're like annoyed. But I'm like, but if there was an American coming to order, they would yeah. order in English. So what's the big deal? Yeah. And see, I've had it with the with white people who have said, you can pass. Why do you, why do you have to so I say you're Latina? And you don't speak Spanish. So are you really? And I'm like, well, yes, I am. But it's, but it's the white community sometimes. I was like, your ignorance of what it means to be Latina, Latine, with Latinx, however you want yeah. to call it, is right. like, is, it's like, it's not my, I don't have to prove anything to you. Mm. But right. they seem to be like, just, just why do you talk about it so much? I focused a lot on, and at first it was because I needed the self-assurance that I was Latina enough. Mm-hmm. I had already embraced the culture with dancing and you know being close to my family, communicating regularly with my cousins mm-hmm. in Cuba. Um, via Facebook, thank you for Google Translate. They <laughs> love it. They love it. We were actually teaching each other. Uh, I was teaching her English and she was teaching me Spanish and it's a bonding experience with somebody that I had never met. Right. But I tried to get all these accomplishments that were Hispanic focused so that I could I could count enough. And it was my own insecurity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then I started doing it just because I really truly enjoyed getting the, getting the outreach, using it as a platform because it gets me a seat at the table, it gets me to help other people. Yep. Now I do it for me. I was doing it to prove it to other people at first. Um, and I definitely have noticed that there's been a shift um, yeah. in, in my motives, in my motives when it comes to that. Right. And, and there's, I'm more secure in it as a result. And I think that's the process because I think it is, you know, to say, yes, I'm Latina out loud in a company you don't know of, is, it, it is, there is assurance because then you're like, I'm going to prove to myself but it's it's difficult because you're kind of a, you're in both worlds but yet not enough in both worlds i know that expression and i feel like you not always have here to from there you know <laughs> to prove yourself like i am spanish enough yes. just because i don't speak spanish and in both cultures it's like where do you fit in and mm. i feel like you have to constantly be proving yourself and it should be something that's just within you and you feel and you have to get really comfortable with that. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. right. But it shouldn't be that way. It's, 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 tough. it's tough for us and for other Latinas that are born here, born there, um, you know, speaking Spanish as, uh, as their first language and not, not pronouncing English properly. Everyone is in this. Which country you're from, the divides amongst the countries oh, yeah. is even is enough. It's that, I, like we don't have enough problems as it is fighting about which <laughs> island you're from and which region you're from or, you know, it's everybody is is Spanish enough. And if someone wants to embrace their culture, imagine like why would you discourage someone from doing that? Well, I remember moving here from the Midwest and I was so excited because there's so many more Spanish speaking people. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> and I was speaking at work. And I remember I used to go to this Puerto Rican cafe who had the best oatmeal and the best food and so and we would chit chat we talk and then finally he was like so where are you from and I'm like well my dad's from Mexico and it was like the whole facial was like and I was like what 
And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> like, we're speaking Spanish. But it was, I never knew like the, the divide also in that. And I was like, mm. and it was different from, from mm. that time. Too. But I actually feel the opposite because I'm Puerto Rican and I feel like everyone is like, oh, you guys are American. You're part of America. And it's like, yeah. no. We're the New Year Rican. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and it's, and now that we're in this kind of, in that, in this subject for me, it's like, I'm not going to say hurtful because I think that especially the lovely lady at the end of the table who really doesn't put much thought into what other people say. Um, <laughs> not historically. No. Right. So, um, <laughs> and what's more hurtful? Getting the, the side-eyed and the confused and the um, just like the huh kind of thing from the non-Latinos or from Latinos? What, what, what? bothers more i think what hurts is is the amount of accomplishments that and the amount of time that i've spent in this um in this realm of of identifying as a latina influencer identifying as as someone who wants to make a difference for charity and and for and for the movement and for for women um within the latina community especially when is it going to be enough i just got i just got notables for cranes and I told someone last week, and they said, but you still don't speak Spanish. And I'm like, you don't either. <laughs> why are you asking so like, why are you asking so many questions? Like, you know, oh, she's like, oh, for Bay Ridge, I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but I just did something so amazing, and I was so proud of it. And, and congratulations first, to you for that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but the first thing out of your mouth is the one thing you got up on me. Right. From a Latina. Yeah. And it's and I'm like, you haven't done anything for your community. Yeah. And it's and I mean, I sponsor an orphanage. When I had no job, I said I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna back off my commitment. And and they didn't no one that that wasn't enough. The fact that I made sure that some little boy had his Christmas presents. They didn't they were like, Yeah, but and I'm like but I think the frustrating so, thing is you how strong we could be if we could just come together. Because I think right? it, it is the Latina, because so much of our roots, a lot of us are Americanized or mm. born here, but it's the rejection from your own. Your own. And we Hurts. are, like you said, we're trying to get a seat at the table mm -hmm. and, and, and share it and bring people with us. Right. And so when people are like, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, but no Spanish, I'm like, but but like let's let's work together because you with me can be so much stronger than you fighting with me because I don't have that energy. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna 100%. waste my time on that. And you almost feel like because this is my culture, because we're Spanish, I should automatically have a seat at the table. Yeah. We should be coming to like unify to go ag not against others, but to create this union to do more, not to be against each other. So I think it's definitely more hurtful to not be accepted by your own because you feel this; these are my people. Mm -hmm. So to not be accepted, you expect that from others, but not your own culture. So definitely more hurtful your own not to accept you and to give you that, you know, cold shoulder. I, I feel it's a trend with women in general. Yeah. I'm a woman in construction and I see the same exact dynamic. If you're in an electrician and, and you're a plumber, your win doesn't take away from her. Right, there's room for so everybody. So why are you mad that she won? Right. Why aren't you cheering? Why aren't you her? celebrating? Right, yeah. I, it's just, or why aren't you asking her, hey, can you help me? You know, we sat before this, we were giving each other ideas and we're trying to figure out what we could do to, to don't, don't be discouraged, you could do it. We were literally just doing that before this started organically, why isn't that happening more in real life? Everyone's quick to judge, especially when we make ourselves public. Right. We make ourselves open to critique. Yeah. Yes. That's true. That's true. And I'm here for it. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Put this on replay. Yeah. Drop, drop the comment. Drop the comment. I'm here for it. <laughs> I will reply. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> so that gives us a good lead into my next question. So Spanish, okay? And Actually, before I get into that, you know, the, the word Latino, the term Latino was just a terminology that was given to anyone who was born or was descended from Latin America. Mm -hmm. And for those out there who are not Latino and may not know, um, Brazil happens to be, yes, uh, Spanish is spoken in the majority of the countries and the islands that make 
you know, Latin America. However, Brazil is the biggest country in Latin America, and they do not speak Spanish. They speak Portuguese. So um, to assume that because you are from or your parents are from or your grandparents are from um, anywhere in Latin America, even if that's uh, St. Martin. Hello, St. Martin or Haiti. Mm -hmm. Okay, to assume that you uh, you're not enough of a Latino because you do not speak the language is straight bullshit mm -hmm. because the biggest country Word. in that area <laughs> is to speaks Portuguese. Right. Okay. So that kind of leads me into my next question, which is Spanish was a language that was forced and brought upon us by colonizers. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's enough conversation about that topic in particular? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. Because like, again, you weren't, people are enforcing you they're judging you if you don't speak spanish and i'm sure plenty of people don't even know that mm -hmm. or don't even put that and i know a lot of people who do speak spanish they don't look at brazilians or people who speak portuguese they put them in a different category so again it's like a it's always a division of who fits in their circle and it shouldn't be that way but i think there's not enough conversation about that I mean, you're not taught, I mean, I wasn't taught in history class about anything Hispanic, you know, African-American culture. I mean, there's no, it was very, very Caucasian. And so that is an important fact that I think should be taught in just all U.S. history classes. Well, I, I just think classes. in general, real history should be taught. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And it should not be washed down. Yes, I agree. Um, to fit the agenda. But go ahead. And I have a, I have a huge double down on this. I'm not trying to one up at you guys here, but... Uh, <laughs> My, my oppression sinks deeper, where I'm half Jamaican. Right. And everyone goes, but you're white. Thank God for 23 and me. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so first I can prove that I'm part a, a nice slice sub-Saharan African. Sit with that, right? Right. And I am part of a colony country, so that my family did come here in, uh, originally from, you know, the, from being a colony country. And I didn't learn about it until I watched The Crown on Netflix. Wow. I didn't physically understand why we were white people living in Jamaica, even though I asked that question within my family so many times. Because you know, by appearance, you know, we were very fair-skinned. Um, it was my mother was a, a quarter um, uh, black and uh, native to, to Jamaica. And I was like, why, but why, but why, but why? And they were like, oh, don't, you know, no, 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 no. Well, as it turns out, um, my great grandfather was a Nazi soldier. And when he left escaping the Nuremberg trials, he married a black woman the second he got to Jamaica. Oh! And then the other side was, was, was colonist, um, that they were there because of the potato famine. So that's when they had become um, farmers in, in Jamaica. But I literally had to spend Get a dig. A, a really long time trying to figure this out because no one in my family wanted to admit. And you see that a lot within the, the Hispanic culture as well. No one wants to admit why they're tanner right. than someone else. You know, right. and that's a big that's a big issue as well. That that's a big part of which country you're from. Oh no, the, you know, they're dark. Yeah, right. we're not from. Well, you I know, have like cousins that are blonde hair, blue eyed, and speak not a word of English. I mean, they're in Mexico, yeah. but yeah, but it's like yeah. I mean, now that you bring that up, it's like. Hmm. There is a lot of racism yes. within our culture. 100%. Right. Aside from just what racism is being put on us, but it's like doubled down furthermore by the complexion of your skin. And the Afro Latinos. Right. And Afro Latinos like, yeah. are so unaccepted, and yeah. it's so sad to watch how much they have to struggle right. to be Latino enough. Right. As as if they haven't gone through enough, enough. Right. already. Already, and and I and I feel like. I have to like literally pull out my 20, like I have to pull out my 23 and me and say, no, 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 I get to have this conversation. I am, I am credible in this conversation and I do crave my culture and I do crave knowing more about my culture from a language standpoint, from a tradition standpoint. And, and I, I will never give up wanting to learn more about my culture, including the language, as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the problem, too. Like, speaking Spanish, the way you look, there's a stereotype of of what everyone's supposed to look like, what they should speak, 
And that's the biggest problem, all the stereotypes. Because I get it very often, like, oh, I thought you were Middle Eastern. Oh, I thought you mm -hmm. were this. Like, what is a Puerto Rican supposed to look like? Mm -hmm. What is a Spanish sup person supposed to look like? Mm -hmm. Everyone, they're, like you said, there's people who I know a girl who is black and, and white, and she was raised in Puerto Rico. She, to her, she's Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So, like, wh where the stereotype is what kind of, like, I think with the speaking Spanish and all that, that's where, like, the lack of acceptance acceptance and just in general like fitting into the culture is like mm -hmm. the stereotypes is the problem oh, I think the stereotypes are huge mm -hmm. I mean I've had someone say to me again you're not Latina enough you're very privileged so why what you know you don't get to say this because I'm like what 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 do you how am I supposed to look in your mind but I think it's a stereotype of what the outside sees us or sees how we should look like and when we don't they're like, you should just pass. And I'm like, but I don't want to pass. And a lot of yeah. that and a lot of that goes back to our nonprofit, Latina Made Not Made. Um, and the stereotype, um, let's talk about outside of the community, of the Latina community, is basically what Hollywood has portrayed a Latino mm -hmm. to or Latina to be, right? So for many, many years, just media in general has had the pen to write the narrative for who we are, right? Mm -hmm. And um, has portrayed whether we are um, the maid, the landscaper, the gangster, um, the sex pod, the mistress. Um, crazy. The whatever. crazy Latina. The yeah. crazy. Yeah. And now with I the new- I am, in fact, the crazy Latina. And now there is, you it. know, that, that the, this new trend of la, la, la toxica, where I don't even know where that comes from, but it's a no. Like, I'm here to tell you guys, like, no, we cannot take a word like toxic mm -hmm. or toxica and put it on us. On us. Yeah. Like, we're it's going backwards. Cute. It's not cute. We are going mm -hmm. backwards. Don't, yeah, you don't know? wear the like, role. Crazy, crazy is in every culture and every ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that, that's just what it is. Especially for women, I think, too. Yeah, think, you like, know. Mm -hmm. you know, where this started, I don't know. But wherever it started, it needs to end because it isn't cool. And, and it's not another stereotype that I am down for right now to also have to try and change and fix. Like, I don't need to hashtag Toxica and see us there. That is not okay. It is 2021. We are in politics. We are, you know, in, in high seating positions. There are so many of us sitting at tables, okay, where we once were not allowed to sit, okay? So... Adding more to what we already have to fight and prove, in a sense, like we don't need it. We really don't. We really don't need it. So going back to that, it's 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 what media has portrayed, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And one of the things that I always say um, when it comes to this, when people are like, "Well, what are we supposed to do?" and 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 what are we? You know, w w there's just so much that we can do, and there's so much that we can say. And I always go back to number one: it is your responsibility. Here's the thing: you know, in our culture, uh, for a lot of sense we are not willing to speak up for ourselves. And I understand that that comes from the whole don't ruffle feathers, blend in, keep your head down, and it is what it is, all right? Mm -hmm. um, but we are so amongst the divided within ourselves that we can't even come together to fight a battle for our community. That is number one. So for me, it is always about take up the space. Mm -hmm. You know, those days of, you know, keep your head down, don't ruffle the feathers, are long gone and be gone. If the African-American community can go out into the streets, all right, across the country, across the world, and say enough is enough, okay, we should be able to do the same for our children in cages or for the representation on media and television and anything else that we are not happy with. But we don't do it. No. So unfortunately, what a lot of people don't understand is that nobody, nobody is going to fight our fight. It's so true. It's so, I mean, and I look, I think the school systems too. And I think, you know, so many people are like, oh, the Latina community is not upset because they're not saying anything. And there's another, you know, there's a very privileged community that is very vocal. And I'm like, they're not saying anything because you're not 
asking. Yeah, and like one of the comments that I see a lot, especially on our Latina May Not May platform, is like, oh, but you know, it's like, when when is it just going to be, you know, when is it, the representation going to be right for everyone? When is it, you know, that we're, you know, we've been here for so long and we're not going anywhere. You know, Mexico owns all of what was the West Coast, right? So it's like, we've been here. Right. Um, so why do we got to keep fighting this battle? And why do we got to why can't it just be because it cannot just be because it's not. I think because it's not it cannot. And we need to take up the space yes. is what I say. You need to take up the space and be able to fight the battle because ain't nobody going to fight it for you. Agreed. So for me, it's yeah. take up the space. Open your mouth. I mean, they say we're loud. Let, well, let's <laughs> use it for a minute. I mean, that's one stereotype. I mean, let's let's own it. I, I mean, embrace that one. I yeah. embrace that one. I'm we're like, loud. Yeah, if you're afraid of what I'm going to say, buckle up right. because I'm going to say it. And right. that's a, a big point, I think, is when you have a voice. Now what are you going to do with it? Right. Right? Exactly. You're here. You're here. You're cute. You're smart. Right? You got your seat at the table. You're smarty pants. There you go. Now what? Are you going to reach your hand back? Are or you going to be you, uncomfortable? I think is the big. Are thing. you going to Are you going to Are you going to reach your hand back and say, "I want to take other women with me. I want to lead other women to where I got." Because or you're are you just the, about yourself, and right. then you become arrogant and an egomaniac, and then you're just you used our ethnicity to right. to be to, your to, token to be your token exactly. to get you your seat. And now, what, what are you doing? And what a lot others? of and what a lot of people under, don't under, understand is that if you get a seat at the table, mm -hmm. right? And you don't bring anybody along with you, right. of course you're going to be difficult yeah. to deal with. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Because you don't got nobody by your side at that table to hold you down. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So with that, I say space, noise. And the third one that I always say is that until Latinos, okay, start taking a serious interest in areas where they are misrepresenting us, and that could be film, media, publications, whatever. Wherever you feel like you are not being seen and you are not being represented, when we start taking real interest in those spaces where the decisions are being decided for us, mm -hmm. then that is when the change will be. And that can be in a week, that can be in five years, that can be in 10 years. But until we don't start taking a serious change, uh, interest in these areas, where we feel unrepresented or we feel like we're not being seen or we feel like we're not being truly represented because we come in so many shades and so many shapes and we, you know, there will be no change. I have, I have a really good point for this and, and I love the name originally, the reason I reached out to you, like what is it, like two years ago now. Um, I love the fact that you're trying to push the change in where we're employing ourselves, mm -hmm. where we're educating ourselves, there's only like 9% Latinas within engineering, within science, technology, engineering, and math, where they can make money. Where are they focusing their energy? Makeup, mm -hmm. shoes, hair, their face, their body, right? We are more than that. And, and we need to start respecting And there's ourselves. nothing wrong with that, but there's I also wrong with but it, I also but we could feel, be in high earning positions. And that is and that and, and that is then true. And changing, not having to be with a man who doesn't love us, not having to try to record a sugar daddy, but being our own sugar daddy, being our own rich husband, that's what's going to change our dynamic. That's what's going to make our children stronger right. and ourselves more independent when we can focus. It is cool to go to be a smart girl. Yeah. And to make a lot yeah. of money yeah. and do yeah. a really good job for yourself, not to be a good wife, because we were raised to be good wives. Yeah. And we know that. Yeah. That we was are what the we caretaker. Were, we were ride or die, mm -hmm. ride or die, mm -hmm. no matter what, deal with everything mm -hmm. and take good care. Take right. good care. Cook, clean. <laughs> And it's true what you say. I really love that because I think that when that happens, because there there are statistics and studies where women just prefer to take careers teaching, and there's nothing wrong with this. Hello, nothing wrong, nothing nothing wrong. wrong with it. <laughs> but we usually end up going for career lines for the most part that there's just so much you can go and there's just so much you can do. So when does that equal pay gap get fixed? When we decide to change. When right. we decide to take those careers that 
you know, white uh, men, just white men, or no, no, men in general. When white, white, when white <laughs> men have been making a ton of money right. doing it, and when we're we, like, no, when not we, for me. <laughs> right, when we take it, serious interests in those positions. Yeah. So going back, do you, any of you have anything to say before we throw I mean, I think back? the only thing I would say, too, is I think we need to give ourselves credit that we are, the Latinos are have more buying power. Right. And I don't think that that is given enough credit and there's more statistics that are coming out, but yet we don't get that voice. We don't get the, the what do you think type of questions for us, but yet we do have the buying power, but we have to realize that. And we, like you said, we have to take up space and say, you know what, just what happened in California? Who, whose vote did they need to make sure that, that Newsom stayed on? It was right. a Latina vote. The only thing about advertising, though, is that I get very insulted when they try to get the Latina or Latino buying power, and they totally insult me in the process. Right. If it's tone deaf. Yes. And if it's just for... It's just the... You can't be the... We can't be the token anymore. No, I don't want to be token, and I don't want to be placated. I don't want you just to put out your Hispanic Heritage Month post. Exactly. (laughs) And then go back to having us get your coffee and right. and you know being treated like the sex pot you know i want to yeah. see it in july i yeah. want to see i, I want to see it all year all year round the problem is i think though that we're we're brainwashed to think that our voices don't count exactly. and stuff and it's years and years of kind of like undoing that and getting to the point where no my voice does count and i'm going to you know lead the way i think it's just easier to be in a comfort zone and to just go with the stereotypes and just well our voice doesn't count does it really even voting it's always like does my one vote really matter yes mm-hmm. it, does. it does yeah a hundred percent so that we're breaking through that like mindset that we've that's been instilled in us mm-hmm. right, right right so i know that you're all on this table mommies i'm not sure i know that you're carrying a little yeah. one oh, <laughs> <laughs> um and i'm a, a, a mommy of two big boys um but studies have shown that bilingual children can outperform monolingual children in a number of subject areas if any of you well i know you guys do have children and you have one on the way um would you like them to learn the language? Is it something that you want them to learn the language? I mean, I'll, I'll go first. I um, I have a freshman in college and I have a high schooler. And my freshman in college, I was like, you have to learn this language. And it's hard because I don't speak it. And I would speak it in my head. My dad would speak to him. And he probably is grammarly is better than I am. So I actually shipped him off to Mexico <laughs> to the family for, oh, for three weeks. And I was like, you, you're going to do this. And you're going to have this great internship with my cousin. And... And you know what came back is, you know, he had a great internship and I was thinking college, but he got to know my family and my right. Mexican roots. And he was like, I can't believe how many cousins we have. I can't believe. And to me, we roll deep. We roll, we roll really. <laughs> he's like, he's, cause I'm like, oh, there's not, he's like, you have so many cousins. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> but I think what he got back out of that was, you know, he's, he tries to speak Spanish. In fact, he, there was an incident where he's like, I spoke to that person and all in Spanish. He was very proud of himself. Yeah. But I think to know the roots and once he felt that family tie, he's more willing to learn now. But so where I was going for to have him to speak Spanish, he got a little bit, but it was more about the family. It was, right. that was really good. So, right. but I wish, I hope so. I hope he continues. So I'll ship him off again. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. I'll send mine two with him. Okay. <laughs> um, for me, I think it's really important because I also feel like because of the stereotypes and people giving you the cold shoulder, you like opportunities come. And I do feel that I lose certain opportunities because I can't speak the language the way others can. So for me, I feel like it's really important. And my my partner speaks fluent Spanish. So <laughs> I'm like lost in the whole family. But I love how you said about the culture. I think that's a big part of it. And speaking Spanish gives you that comfort zone to be like, this is my culture. And not to feel, I guess, in a way what I have felt that I can't speak Spanish, that I'm not Spanish enough. So I never want my kid to feel that way and to be comfortable to like just lead the way and be a boss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think I'm really lucky. My son's 15. Um, honestly, the best kid in the whole world. And he's uh, was spent a lot of time with his dad's side of the family. We actually lived in the house for a period of time. Um, and they're very Italian. So they speak Italian all around the house. He's got tons of that Italian culture. And I made it my business to make sure that he knew Miami. 
He knew his family. Um, I, I have uh, incredible, incredible love for my family down there. And one of my cousins actually moved up and came to live with us during COVID. And it was the happiest thing he could have ever experienced because he had, he had like a, a real deal Cuban living with him. And it was like, <laughs> he was like every, holy yeah. culture, culture shock. <laughs> yeah, no, but he, he embraces the culture. Um, he doesn't embrace the language, but my son knows he's Cuban. Mm -hmm. He knows the food. He knows, how, you know, he knows right. how to communicate with his grandma who practically lived in our house until she moved to Florida. Um, and he knows he has family in Cuba. He knows where he comes from and what it means to him. And I, I think, think that's that a generation. the most important thing. Yeah, I think that's a generation. Definitely. And I think maybe hopefully that's what we have like passed on because each generation changes is like, we needed to like feel like we spoke Spanish, at least I needed to, in order to fit in. They don't need that anymore. We needed to find our pride. He's got they it. They already have it. He's got it. And I think that gives them such an advantage yep. over us because our grandparents were like, my grandmother was always embarrassed that she couldn't speak English right. properly. Like now he knows what matters, yep. right? It's not necessarily the language. You're gonna see so much less of it as the as generations, the generations yes. keep going. Yes. It's do you have pride for who you are, where you came from and what they did to get you here. Yeah. And the story is amazing. And, and, and I think that's what he hasn't gotten filtered down or watered down in any way, shape or form. And it's yeah. refreshing. It's really, really yeah, refreshing. I think that as the generations go, you know, at some point you're going to lose the language. If you're not really like instilling that in your house and it's like the way I was raised. Oh, you got to go to the bathroom. How do you? you <laughs> Español. ¿Qué, qué tú quieres? <laughs> and if I wouldn't say tengo que ir al baño, yeah, good luck, girl. Good luck. <laughs> good luck right there. You know, like a trapo is right there. We could go dry it up, you know? Um, but for me, you know, I have a son. My oldest son is 20 and uh, my youngest is 16. And it, it's funny because my oldest one was raised by my grandma, just like I was, you know? And, um, and I don't know how they communicated, but they communicated very well. Um, and then when he learned about computers and Google Translate, that's the way they would communicate. Right. Like he would type it in English and have it in Spanish. And my grandmother would, and you know, Google doesn't always translate it's it. Not the right way. It's not and, always funny. It's not always funny. And you would have my grandmother say, ¿Qué mierda te es eso? ¿Qué tú estás haciendo? You know, like, <laughs> I understood that. Of, right, yeah. So it, it's funny, but now he's 20 years old and like, First, I never understood. It's like, boy, you were raised with the same person mm -hmm. that raised me. You were very well into the Spanish. Because, yes, my parents speak English. My mom speaks it perfect. Like I said, she was here since she's five. My father got here when he was 13. So even though his English is good, he has that heavy accent. Yeah. And Spanish just is just an easier language for him. So it's like, it's not like you couldn't have learned. I will tell you, though, I did spend a great deal of time with my great grandparents in Miami. They would just ship us there. Um, they never spoke a word of English, never had to. They lived in Westchester, Miami. It was not a requisite in any way, shape or form to learn the language. And we just had an understanding. Right. You just I understand. Just always, and I honestly, right before she passed, uh, you know, she was she was uh, two weeks before she passed. I went down there and, and I was 30. I, my son was young at the time. And I said, I just want to spend some time taking care of her. Mm -hmm. um, and we never spoke the same language, but I felt such a connection to her. And I remember growing up with Sabado Gigante. <laughs> <laughs> I said it right. She just said, "Excuse me." Excuse <laughs> uh, me. You know, I heard it blaring in this in the house, and the you know the guy with the with the horse. Chacal. See. Si? Oh, a, oh, a, oh a, mercado. No, um, white mercado. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy. I've uh, seen all of that in my house, and I, I had nothing but that on the TV in my grandmother's house, in my great grandparents' house. You don't always learn it, but you get it. Yeah. If yeah. that makes a lot of sense, it and, does. Yeah. Yes. And and I think you know having a learning disability it was always really really hard for me to understand the language, but damn, do I understand the language? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like I, it, I know I know how and when. I might not be able to pronounce it right because I'm embarrassed about that. And maybe when I'm 50, I'll learn to stop being embarrassed because there's very little, very few fucks are given about as the, older, as the older you get. Yeah. But, but what I'm trying to say is like my son is now 20 years old and, you know, his his Spanish vocabulary has grown. Some of the words are not the words that I wish <laughs> that he knew and he knows how to use them properly. <laughs> um, but every once in a while, he'll be like, um, but why didn't you ever teach me? Yeah. And I'm like, boo boo. I we grew up the same way 
and I learned it and it was my first language. Mm -hmm. So now it's like sometimes it's like, you know, why didn't you teach me? Um, I, I want to learn. I'm like, good. Rosetta Stone, <laughs> YouTube is a great tools. And then you have my 16 year old who doesn't speak a word and I can talk bad about about him in Spanish and he he won't know what's going on and he doesn't care to know. Mm. Mm. I used to always ask my dad, daddy, why didn't you teach me? Do you know how hard this is? Mm. Why didn't you teach me? He was a translator in the courts, like as a, as a part-time job. He, like, he's literally fluent as his first language. All of them speak perfect English with no accent and then can throw on the perfect Spanish speaking language. And it's like they know how to turn it on and turn it off, but they never taught us. I'm like, why would you do this to us? Like, we want this. Like, I have 10 first cousins that all craved being able to speak Spanish. And we all said, why would you not teach us? You, you guys all had it. Why wouldn't you do it? And it was just like, it was the time. Yeah. You know, especially since each one of them didn't have a child with a Spanish speaking person. Oh, right. that, that makes was it a little... the difference, right. right? My mother was Jamaican. My cousins married Italians. My aunt, you know, married someone that was Anglo. And uh, there, there wasn't... It wasn't in the house, it was in the grandma's house. It was in the there. So it was a part-time situation that didn't really merit it and we got what we needed. We understood. I learned the commands. Dame un serviette. Dame un serviette. Me that, me that, me that. I knew the commands. Like, like <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, I do think it was different times and I think yeah. as a parent, you always want to protect your child from going through what, what you went through. Right. And that's what I think breaks my heart is my father wanted to try to protect me mm -hmm. from, you know, so it's like if it means if you not learning Spanish means you don't have an accent and you can pass more, then that's okay. Not knowing that we would be here in this time where it's like, yes, no, I want to speak. And again, as an adult, my aunts came to visit me, I think, six years ago as an adult. And my dad was like, oh my gosh, they don't speak any English. I'm like, we'll get by. It was the most amazing time. They came every year until like COVID happened, where because we we got we got it. We muffled it's an effort. It's an effortless exchange of of of, yeah. of connection. Right. I don't have a problem communicating with my family. Yeah, it's nothing amazing. could stop me. Yep. Not for my great grandmother, not for my cousins in Cuba. Nothing could stop me from communicating with my family, and language hasn't stood in that way. Which is way. so surprising when our community then rejects us, because it's like, yeah, wait like, a that's minute. the punchline. Yeah. Like, why does it bother you when it's not affecting my yeah. ability yeah. to be close with my family? Yeah. You're just being. Yeah, well, I think that speaks the, volumes a of how <laughs> the language is not really what makes you Spanish. That mm -hmm. speaks volumes as to what makes you Spanish, what makes you part of the culture and embracing your culture. It's not the language, it's everything that comes with it. And like you said, yeah. understanding it, the food, the the love, the I think like we're so big on family and all that, like that is what makes you Spanish, not whether you can speak it or not. The customs, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a problem for my cousins in Cuba. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't a problem for for my great grandmother, yeah. it should not be a problem for you. Who I don't know. Who I don't know. <laughs> yes. Bye, bye. <laughs> All right. So before we wrap up, one last question: What advice do you have to those who are younger than you out there? Anybody that's watching and listening, who is Latina right now, um, doesn't speak the language um, and is trying to navigate through the Latino spaces? Fuck it. <laughs> well Period. said no yeah you just like i said be proud of your culture be proud of who you are and people's opinions and judgments shouldn't determine whether you're spanish or enough like if you feel like that's you belong at that table sit at that table not speaking spanish shouldn't have anything to do with it and embrace it you know i am in the spanish culture a lot for what i do and i think that i had to get to a certain point where it was like you know what no i am spanish and i belong at this table and you're just gonna have to get used to it and you're just gonna have to practice your english a little bit with me well, i'm surprised <laughs> what oh, let's learn we together never, <laughs> we never yeah. said one we never said this this term the entire time was i suffered from imposter syndrome yeah yeah my whole life until like the moment i turned 40 where i was like I don't fucking care. <laughs> I'm going to do what I want and I'm okay with it. So don't worry about if you're okay with it. I wasn't asking. Exactly. And that's, I think what you're saying, like it was the term that you're saying is like, we just sat here in an entire thing about talking about being 
Right. Having imposter syndrome right. and how you overcame it. I mean, there's a name for it and right. other people deal with it in all sorts of different ways. But I think too, I think as a young Latina, Latine, female, <laughs> however you're going to be identified is you need to find that older one and you need to say, I want to come with you. I, can you, can I sit with you? Mm -hmm. Let me talk with you because we're here to yeah. help you. We're here to include you. And if you find someone who's not, find someone who is, and we are here. And so I think that's the other thing is, like we were saying, use your voice. Mm -hmm. I think the younger people need to use their voice and come together with the elder generations and let's work together and we'll be at the table. So when we walk away, we're walking away and we have, we have three people behind us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also the thing too is, you know, and so they learn how to say, cause I think some of the youth are, they're in, that is their generation. I don't care, mm -hmm. but it's like, I don't care together in a community and I, I don't care in a selfish way. Yeah, and right. I think that's really important too. Well, thank you, ladies, for being here. This has been a, an amazing thank conversation, you. one that I've actually wanted to have for a very long time. Um, but I'm glad that we had it here, so that more people can see it, more people can hear it, and it's out there. So again, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Gracias. Thank, thank you so much. This was so much fun, and yeah. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of the Polymath Latina podcast. Stay connected with us directly through thepolymathlatina.com and join the conversation over on Instagram. Make sure to subscribe and like, and then go listen to this episode on your favorite podcast player. Remember to share your smile. Y hasta la próxima.